Hi, John from Sound Devices, and today we're going to talk about the MixPre Series 2 and 32-bit float audio. The MixPre Series 2 is the latest versions of the MixPre. The very first ones came out in 1999, and it was a little two-channel analog mixer, and it was a very popular unit for ENG and, and corporate video and a very small little accessory mixer. It was very handy. We revised that to the MixPre D, which offered AES Digital Out. It also had USB Audio I.O. And then in 2018, we introduced the MixPre 3, 6, and 10T. And they look identical physically to this. And last year, we revised those into new models, the MixPre Series 2, again, models 3, 6, and 10. The difference between the original MixPre 3, 6, and 10T and the present models all models in the Series 2 have time code generators. They all can record to SD cards and record a post-record copy to a USB uh, memory stick. And they also share a new hardware topology with multi-stage A to D converters. That allows us to record 32-bit float audio files. It also allows us to send 32-bit float over USB. So let's talk a little bit about 32-bit float. We're all familiar with 24-bit audio. That's the standard. That's what you are recording for your dialogue. That's what you're delivering to post. And that's what everybody's expectation is. 24-bit audio is a very big file. It's got 144 dB of dynamic range. When we take a microphone signal into a mixer and we're in a 24-bit environment, we set our gain structure. We set the gain structure so that we've got sufficient level before zero dBFS so we don't overload. We also don't want the signal too low because we may run into the noise floor and then further down we might run into quantization noise in a 24-bit environment. So 24-bit has its benefits. Again, it's a high dynamic range signal, but if we're in an environment with wildly uncontrolled signal levels from microphone sources, 32-bit float is an advantage. 32-bit float has been used as the internal file format for DAWs for several years. We presented this out at the pre-amplifier stage in the MixPre Series 2. So what that means is the MixPre Series 2 hardware has multiple analog to digital converters. There's multiple analog gain stages feeding those A to D converters. That signal from the microphone goes into those multiple converters and then is constructed into a 32-bit float signal. Once it's a 32-bit float signal, we can record it as a 32-bit float file. And we can also send it over USB in a Mac OS and a Windows environment to DAWs that can accept 32-bit float. Now, 144 dB dynamic range with 24-bit 1,500 plus dB of dynamic range in 32-bit float. Again, in 24-bit, we want to set a good gain structure. That's important for us. In 32-bit float, there's really no need to set a gain structure. Gain is invariant. With a microphone signal coming into the mixer, if I have that gain at a very high level, it's really only a construct that makes more sense in a 24-bit environment versus the 32-bit float environment. Because I can come in with a gain at nearly any level because I can make that gain decision after the fact. I can scale the gain over such a wide range in a 32-bit float, 32-bit float environment that I can make those gain decisions after recording. So if you are doing sound effects recording with incredibly low-level signals or incredibly high-level signals, or both, you have the ability to simply connect the microphone into the unit and not be concerned of what the specific gain level is because you can make those decisions later. Let's do an example here. So this is a Royer 121 plugged into here, and I'm going to set the gain where I would typically have it for a speech level at this subject to microphone distance. So now you've got meters deflecting and You've got a good level. I'm not going into the red. I'm not hitting a limiter. So this is a good, nice signal level. 
and I'm gonna, I've recorded the signal, we're gonna play this back and you're gonna be able to hear it. Now, I'm gonna go back into here and I'm going to set the gain low. So now, at the microphone preamplifier, we're showing 6 dB of gain applied. I'm gonna start recording. What you see is we're not even hitting the minus 50 dBFS on the meter here, which is incredibly low. So this is undermodulated by 50 plus dB. I need to have much more gain because this is a low output ribbon microphone. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna play this signal back and we're gonna listen to its noise floor and its performance relative to that other microphone recording, which had the gain at a more normal level. So what you heard was that the signal that was originally recorded at the normal level, and then the second recording, which was the signal recorded at 50 dB below that, there is no performance difference between those when the gains are normalized. This is a significant benefit if you are in an application. Again, sound effects recording, environments where you have unpredictable sounds. The downside of 32-bit float is that you will need to post-process this audio if you're working this file back into a 24-bit environment. Because an over-modulated signal in a 32-bit float environment very well may over-modulate in 24-bit, although it'll be just fine in 32-bit. Or under-modulated in 32-bit is going to be too low in a 24-bit environment and you're going to get into noise issues. So the 32-bit float environment is not for every application, but it's a great tool to have in your arsenal when you have situations that require it. Thank you very much.